Outback Australia, an unforgiving territory, and a land of amazing creatures, where sometimes nature needs a helping hand. These are the everyday heroes bound by a single mission to save wildlife anywhere, anytime. In this episode of Outback Wildlife Rescue... I was hit by a car about three months ago. Will Archimedes the koala ever return to the wild? He's not even trying to fight us off. The race to save a snared kite. I don't know how anyone could do this to it. There's a big one, you can see him down over here. And an uninvited guest who refuses to leave the dinner table. It's like a uh, restaurant, an outback restaurant for these guys. Australia is a massive continent, from the tropical Queensland coast to what's called the Top End, Darwin and the monsoonal wetlands that surround it, and south through the arid interior to the red deserts of Alice Springs and beyond. An hour up the Queensland coast from Brisbane, there's a vet clinic like no other the Australian Wildlife Hospital at Beerwa. They're lining up in the doorway now. <laughs> all the seal the cages that are starting to appear. The day is big. <laughs> it's a non-stop, 24-hour MASH-style clinic. Next, I think I've got more flying foxes. Uh, I think I've got possibly a kangaroo, and there's a whole stack of birds waiting as well. So plenty to do for the next few hours. Every day, they get called to help a 100 or more rescued creatures and they're queuing up from the crack of dawn. A lot of our animals, because they're nocturnal, get hit the night before and then they're found during the, um, the early hours of the morning, so most mornings tend to be like this um, or busy up. Gail Gipp manages the hospital. John Hanger's the senior vet. I still feel a tiny bit of meat. They're hardened to the fact that more than two-thirds of the animals brought here have either been hit by a car or attacked by a family dog. Dog attacks. Um, Injuries are notoriously hard to fix because they often have very severe internal injuries, so they're hard to, um, you know, they're challenging patients to get through anyway. We probably save, I don't know, maybe 50% of them. A quarter of the patients are koalas, and this morning has been a bad one for them. We've just got a fractured humerus, fractured clavicle, that joint is routed. Despite their looks, Koalas aren't bears. They're a marsupial, uniquely adapted for Australian life. Their front paws each have two thumbs to help them climb. And inside, there's an organ like an appendix two metres long to help digest the tough eucalyptus leaves they eat. Of course, what they can't do is adapt to people. And between cars and habitat loss, some estimate their population to be as low as 100,000. One at the moment um, is a car hit. She was hit at 7 o'clock this morning. We're unsure of the extent of her injuries at the moment, other than that she's in a lot of pain and she's got quite a swollen face. The one Amber's working on was hit last night. Um, she's got internal damage and is also in a lot of pain. And then the one over there is a boy that came in yesterday that has spinal injuries. Each of these koalas faces a long, difficult road to recovery. Yeah, she's doing big breaths now. It's a journey Archimedes is all too familiar with. Three months ago, his life hung in the balance on an operating table too. But everyone's hoping today he'll get the all clear to return to the wild. Catherine lies 300 kilometres south of Darwin in the Northern Territory. 10,000 people treading the border between the desert and the tropics. And one of them is on a wildlife rescue mission. 
We've just received a call from a lady on the other side of town who has a big snake, she says, in her chook pen. So uh, we'll head there straight away uh, and hopefully save her and the snake. David Reed, or Reedy as his mates call him, has the government contract to rescue wildlife hereabouts. He answers 500 call-outs every year, all at the ripe old age of 21. It was what I was born to do. It's my ideal job, it's my ideal passion, and I just consider myself so lucky to be able to do what I do. So for Reedy, this is a labour of love. Every rescue is a chance to save an animal and help a human. Morning, how are you? I'm good, David, how are you? Thanks for coming out so quick. That's all right. I understand you've got another snake with your children. A chokes. big one and he's had breakfast already. Oh, well looked after. A good home for him. Absolutely. Whereabouts is he? Oh, he's up in the corner. Well, he was up, up the in back. the corner. Oh, yeah. the chooks are brave. They're all in there still. Reedy's joking now, but he's going to have his hands full. Stephen Carter and Lisa Hansen run Darwin's Ark Animal Hospital. When it comes to injured wildlife, they've seen more than most around here. But by the side of the road, they've stumbled onto one of the most shocking scenes either of them have ever encountered. It's hard to believe, but we've just come across this uh, kite here. He wasn't easy to spot, he was just right down on the riverbank. Some horrible person has made a snare to trap birds and it works. It's just been hanging by one wing for who knows how long. Long enough to look. There's no leaves at all yeah. left here, so he's been it's here for a exhausted. while. He's been in distress for a while. He's, he's not even he's not even trying to fight us off. He's covered in ants. He's just poor thing. I don't know. I don't know how anyone could do this to her. It's a whistling kite, a bird of prey common across mainland Australia. This one's young and didn't know enough to avoid the snare. Lisa and Stephen are his only hope. You can see he's just a baby. A bit of a rude welcome to the world. Oh, looks big. Look at that. Oh. Okay. You can see. Oh, look how swollen it is. You poor little sweetheart. At the moment, it's really swollen. Um, so there's certainly likely yep. to be a lot of soft tissue damage and um, possibly even some permanent damage to the blood supply. Let's destroy the trap because we don't want anyone else getting caught in it. People like to put them in a trap. Yeah, I can't believe it. All right, let's have a look at the swing. Gonna have to make sure we get all the cotton off uh, because um, it's gonna act like a tourniquet and it'll be cutting the blood supply off to the end of the wing. He's undoubtedly uh, quite dehydrated and in a fair degree of shock. Um, he's given up. You can see how sort of placid he is. Uh, we really need to get him back to the clinic. Thank you. In Catherine, Reedy's moving in to tackle what's apparently a very big snake in Marilyn's hen house. Snakes, you know, in Catherine aren't a particular favourite animal and a lot of people are still scared of them. So you're trying to save the snake uh, and, you know, save the people at the same time. The snake uh, can get in, but then he has a meal uh, and has a trouble getting back out with a large lump. So he'll find a nice shady spot, uh, curl up there and try and digest it for a couple of days. He certainly is a big one. You can see him down over here. It's an olive python, which can grow more than four metres long. They're not venomous and kill their prey by constricting it until it suffocates. More often, that's wallabies or lizards, or in this case, a slow chicken. He's come in here looking for dinner. He's found that last night. Uh, people that keep a lot of chooks or even birds in aviaries like this, it's like a uh, restaurant, an outback restaurant for these guys. So uh, it really is a big attraction and it's not an uncommon circumstance to find them like this. Reedy has to catch this snake, and it's not to be taken lightly. He's not poisonous, but he can still give a nasty bite. All right, we'll see if we can get him out and get him away and save some, the rest of the chooks. 
respect is my golden rule when working with snakes. He certainly is a big snake. He's probably going on uh, near three metres. And he's a little bit defensive, you can see in there. Uh, snakes feel very vulnerable at this sort of time. Like, he's got a, a rather large food source in him, and he's sitting there uh, saying that, you know, I'm vulnerable, I can't move as fast as what I normally do. Uh, stay away or I'll bite you. So we'll see if we can pick him up just nice and easy. In Biwa, the operating theatre is still full of sick koalas. He had a severe bash on the head. Oh, so. And out in the recovery area, Archimedes is waiting his turn for treatment. He's had a rough time. He was hit by a car about three months ago and he had a fractured jaw. So these are the x-rays or some of the x-rays of Archimedes when he came in. The, uh, the fracture that he had um, is a symphyseal fracture, so a fracture through the, the centre of the jaw. So the, the treatment for, um, for the fractured symphysis just really involves wiring together the two uh, incisors on the lower jaw. It sounds simple enough, but Archimedes had other ideas. He kept breaking those wires. The fractured jaw fell apart three times on us and we had to repair it consistently. So, yeah, he was touch and go for a long time. Now, at long last, they're hoping his jaw is properly healed. But they need to check with a final examination. That sedative will stop him struggling and hurting himself. It's a really big day for Archimedes because we didn't think he was going to make it back to the wild. With luck, by the time he wakes up, he'll finally be ready to go home. We'll see if we can pick him up just nice and easy. Snakes have amazing senses. You can see him flicking his tongue like that. The thing is, is just to be nice and gentle, uh, and most of the time, the snake really doesn't want to hurt you. And once he feels that you're not a threat, uh, he's normally quite happy uh, just to try and work yourself away, uh, rather than restricting to biting or trying to hurt you. So, but you can really see, uh, like that's quite a large lump, and that'll probably be oh, a couple of kilos worth of food. So, uh, it probably might have been the first time that he's eaten. Uh, possibly in about four, five, maybe even six months uh, after the dry season. So if you sort of compare the size of that lump to the size of his head, uh, there really is quite a huge difference. So it's amazing uh, the muscles that snakes uh, can use uh, to stretch their jaw and allows them to swallow such big prey. Turns out Reedy's quite the snake charmer, but Marilyn's still keeping her distance. If you live in the Territory, you, um, you have to be prepared to live with snakes because that's part of life up here. And it seems if you've got chooks, you have snakes. All right, nice and easy into the bag. Up here, they have a unique way of measuring big snakes. He's probably about 15 kilos, uh, which is equivalent to two cases of beer, so quite substantial for an Australian snake. The girls in the hen house are breathing a big sigh of relief. Now, the challenge for Reedy is to find a safe place to release the snake. In Darwin, Stephen and Lisa have brought the injured whistling kite back to the ark. Let's have a look at you. They found him hanging in a trap and exhausted from the struggle. Okay. Kites are hunters. Their sight is thousands of times better than ours. They'll drop on mice and lizards from more than a hundred metres up. But this one won't be doing that for a while. This guy's been hanging from his wing. Um, it's fairly common for them to, to break their collarbone. That shoulder's a bit sore, a bit wrenched, but um, the anti-inflammatories should help settle that down and make him feel better. I'm just feeling at the moment for any breaks or fractures, any sort of uh, other damage. There's still a lot of swelling there. Doesn't appear to be any breaks or, or any significant damage there. We will take an x-ray to confirm that that's all intact. All things considered, the kite's in remarkably good shape. 
X-ray. But with that injured wing, there's no way he can be set free yet. We're going to treat him with some anti-inflammatories and some antibiotics and time. He's going to need some looking after for a while. And Lisa has a unique halfway house in mind. In Catherine, Reedy's got a whole bag of olive python to deal with. But for its own good, he won't be setting it free just yet. With the olive python that we got this morning on the call out in the chook pen, we'll just sort of put him in this tub here, uh, leave him in peace and quiet, uh, let him digest his meal without any stress. Down we go. Now, you've got to remember, uh, this snake, again, like he's been curled up nice and tied in the bag, uh, away from stress or away from uh, any other people, and this will just help him keep quiet. Reedy's handling nice the python easy. with a lot of care because right now there's a risk that chicken dinner could come back up again. If you stress the snake too much, uh, one thing they might do is actually regurgitate it. And the best thing for the snake uh, is to actually let him uh, keep that meal down and digest it and get all the value from it that he can. So we'll put him here, nice and quiet. Uh, it may seem like a small box for a big snake, but uh, within the next week or until he digests the meal, uh, he won't be moving a hell of a lot anyway. So he'll be quite happy uh, to have a nice environment where he can sit down, curl up, and not be disturbed. Archimedes' time has finally come in Biwa. He's been anaesthetised for his examination. So how's it been going, Trisha? Yeah, it's been going well. He was hit by a car and broke his jaw. Have you taken a temp yet? It's a problem they see almost every day here at the clinic. They're so small, they're really at bumper bar level for a lot of cars, and they usually come off really badly, which is unfortunate for them. John can't take any chances. If Archimedes is freed too soon, he won't be able to feed and he'll die. Just about doing that final check before they're released out in the wild, just to make sure that we haven't overlooked something or they haven't developed another condition while they've been in here. So it's basically just a, a, a thorough general physical examination like they might receive when, they, when they're first admitted. I don't think people realise um, the state of the koalas and the reality is that they will be gone from urban areas in our lifetime and I think that we're responsible for that, and we owe them so much. Every koala released back to the wild matters, but can Archimedes be set free? Reedy is on his way to release the troublesome olive python. He's digested his stolen chicken, and Reedy knows exactly the right place to set him free. Down by the river, and away from people. Olive pythons uh, love the water. This is an ideal environment here for him, so we'll let him go, uh, let him adapt into his new environment, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll be a safe and happy life for him to continue on living away from people. Uh, olive pythons uh, in this sort of habitat or along the river corridor would quite often come across maybe some possums, uh, you know, large birds, possibly even ducks or something like that. Uh, you know, the food source in the river corridor is abundant. So that's why it's a good environment to release a snake, uh, especially a big, you know, olive python, which commonly preys on, you know, birds or mammals and marsupials. So we'll be able to let him go, uh, and hopefully by the time it warms up a bit later today, he'll have found a place to, uh, you know, hide up uh, and sit out the day, and then probably come out tonight seeing pythons are nocturnal. So he'll be nice and happy. So not a chook pen for miles, so hopefully the chooks are safe, uh, the snake's safe, and they can all live happily ever after. The whistling kite's life is on the up. Lisa and Stephen freed him from a snare, and he's largely uninjured. He's had a lucky escape, which is ironic, given he's about to become a jailbird. 
Very good, thanks. We got a new addition for you. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's that's a, he's a little whistling kite. Whistling kite. The Ark helps set up a program at Darwin's prison, where inmates like Lee volunteer to help injured so wildlife. You can see. Hey. hey. You can see um, that, that wing this there. Wing, yep. Yeah, you can yep. see how yep. it's all. Yep. Yeah. And if you pull it out, you can see that he's got. Um, you can see how he's all swollen and. It's looking a little bit better, but yeah, it's not too bad. Um, but if you compare it to the other wing, it's quite sick. What do you reckon? Hey? The kite's pretty much guaranteed 24-hour care, and in just 12 months, more than 150 animals have passed through here. That's really good. He's actually used both wings there. That means that he hasn't got any significant nerve damage, so he shouldn't be here for too long. Yep, that's a very, that's a very good sign, yep. Yeah. Shouldn't take him too long and he'll be up and flying around with the other birds. Oh, you were used to it. Yeah. Used Thanks, that, Lee. Thank see you, Lee. Thanks, we'll see you later. See ya. The kite's journey won't end here. Provided all goes well, Lisa will be back to spring him in a month. This is another good day. We've managed to rescue this little bird and send him up here. And I've seen him fly. I know he's going to be ready for release. It's just a fantastic day. It's a good day. And it's a good day in Biawa, too. Archimedes has passed his physical. He's almost home. Koalas are territorial little creatures. Kate, from the release team, is putting Archimedes back near the old haunt where he was found. He's ready to go, that's for sure. Okay, hey, buddy. Ready? Here you go. To his territory, he's letting everyone know he's home. And he's a young male, so maybe he's gonna have a bit of a party tonight, I don't know. But he's certainly happy to be back. Blue gums are one of their favourite food sources, so he's gonna have plenty to eat here forever. It's great. Archimedes' release is one small victory in the battle to help a species survive. Young and healthy, he could breed for the next 10 years. So hopefully, this little win could make a big difference. That's a baby. That's a life. That's just a little animal that needs a hand. To be able to release it, that just shows you that you're doing your job well. It's fantastic. The best feeling on this planet, I think. I love it. <laughs>